Prince and Princess of Wales arrived on Wednesday at Victoria Airport after a long 10-hour flight to give the people of this province the first opportunity to catch a glimpse of the royal couple on this first day of a seven-day visit to British Columbia. More than 30,000 people gathered outside the legislature in Victoria to give the royal couple a royal welcome. Her Majesty invited the nations of the world to come to British Columbia this year to help us celebrate Expo 86. We are honored and delighted that among the first to accept Her Majesty's invitation are their Royal Highnesses. This is an exciting year for British Columbians, not simply because we are hosting a World's Fair, but because of what that signifies a broadening of our economic and culture horizon, a leap forward. Your Royal Highnesses, your presence in our province enhances and adds a special dimension to the sense of celebration and excitement that is sweeping our province. For that, we are grateful indeed. I know all British Columbians join me in welcoming you to Canada's Pacific province and in the next few days as you visit Expo 86 and the different regions of this magnificent province, you will be meeted, meet and be greeted by thousands of British Columbians for whom you serve as a link between the traditions of the past and the promise of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, His Royal Highness, Prince of Wales. I can only say that uh, it is a very great pleasure, as far as I'm concerned, to be back in Canada again, and indeed back in British Columbia. But it's a particular pleasure to be able to uh, introduce my wife to this great Pacific province. And to let her see for herself, and to find out for herself, just what a warm, hearty lot you all are. The last time we were in Canada was uh, in 1983 when we visited the Maritime Provinces and that was uh, uh, a great uh, experience for both of us. And now, of course, my wife's first visit here, she's been looking forward to it enormously. So both of us are looking forward very much to seeing something of British Columbia during our short visit and, above all, to meeting as many of you, the inhabitants and citizens of this province, as possible. So thank you very much indeed for such a warm and friendly welcome. Thank you. Day two of the royal visit begins at the Nanaimo Airport. Everywhere they go, children take the day off school to see a real live prince and his princess. Here the Prince of Wales helps things along by gathering up the dozens of bouquets of flowers for his wife. They're only at the airport for 10 minutes, but the kids got what they came for. What did the rest of you kids think? Yes. Meanwhile, the crowd gathers at the Maffeo Sutton Park, Nanaimo's new waterfront park. This is where Charles and Diana will spend most of their time in Nanaimo. There are plenty of flowers for the Princess of Wales wherever she goes, even some homemade ones. I know that uh, 
Nanaimo is known as the bathtub capital of the world. I think it sounds the greatest possible fun, delightfully crazy, but thoroughly worthwhile. Although I have a feeling it's not worth uh, my while taking part, because um, the most dangerous thing in a bathtub must surely be a former naval officer. Seven-year-old Chris Baxter was one of the children picked to present Diana with flowers. Chris is the Nanaimo boy who was given a liver transplant just before Christmas. How was it, Chris? Is it fun? Yeah. What did she say? She said thank you for the flower when I bowed. The royals strolled casually through the park, creating great excitement as they got closer to the spectators. At one point, Prince Charles picked up the pace, past our cameras. And finally, but all too soon, it was time to continue on. They leave behind wonderful memories for those who got to see them or even talk to them. You've got what is this? What's on here? It's uh, Princess Diana. It says a princess for Wales. <laughs> and so, what did he say? Sorry. He said you don't use that to dry dishes, do you? <laughs> and what did you say? I said no. <laughs> From Nanaimo, the couple sailed away aboard the Queen of the North, bound for Vancouver. Bathtubs from Nanaimo couldn't follow the Royal Ferry for all of its two-hour trip to Vancouver, but the HMCS Terra Nova did, firing off a 21-gun salute. Prince Charles and Princess Diana responded to the salute by ordering a splice to the main brace. And it means that each member, each officer and member of the ship's company of Terra Nova will be issued a tot of rum in honor of the occasion. <laughs> While it was smooth sailing for the trip, it was a bit windy, especially up on the forward observation deck with the royal couple and Premier Bennett. Get blown away. As Vancouver's Lionsgate Bridge loomed into view, Prince Charles and Princess Diana took to their royal box and watched the show from behind glass as they entered Vancouver Harbor. The ferry's destination, Canada Place, where several hundred people eagerly waited. For some, even the first glimpse of the Queen of the North Ferry proved too much. Despite the fuss on shore, Princess Diana remained shy die, bowing her head when photographers asked for her picture. But as the ship docked, she stepped forward, and the crowd responded. As Prince Charles and Princess Diana left the ferry, they were greeted by Prime Minister Mulroney and wife Mila. But that's when they disappeared from view. A five-minute show for some who had waited more than three hours. This morning, it's the official opening of the Canada Pavilion. This building really is fantastic. It's set apart, as we said, about a kilometer away from the major expo site, and it's dominated by those huge sails above the area where the Canada Pavilion uh, is located. At the far end is uh, one of the new hotels that's gone up in this city to take a uh, load of many of the visitors, and <laughs> the royal visitors are staying there at that hotel uh, for this particular week. This is a showcase on the harbor front already in Vancouver, Peter, and it is the structure that people around the world are going to come to recognize as being symbolic of Vancouver, and it is the trade and convention center of the future that this city has desperately needed, and it is a, it is a beautiful structure. It, as you mentioned, is a, about a kilometer away from the main expo site, but it is, a, it is a building that is going to draw an awful lot of traffic from the expo site by a designated ALRT rapid transit uh, line, which will bring people here. And here is the royal couple, Charles and Diana, followed, of course, by Prime Minister and Mrs. Mulroney, right on schedule, uh, as expected, to uh, officiate at the ceremonies for the Canadian Pavilion.
Canada Pavilion, officially open now by the Prince and Princess of Wales and Prime Minister and Mrs. Mulroney. And you were talking about the fact that it is separated by about a kilometer from the main expo site. But I think uh, the thing to remember is that this is our national pavilion. It is going to be a pavilion that people are going to want to see and to uh, and to get to. It is uh, certainly the most, it's a permanent structure. It's one of the few on the site and it is, uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful structure. And I think uh, a building people are going to want to see. They expect to put 35,000 people a day through Canada Pavilion alone. You're looking at the area now just outside what is called the Great Hall. This is the western promenade uh, right along the waterfront where the Prince is now greeting some of the youngsters who are taking part in today's uh, opening ceremonies. If uh, you look out right past where these uh, people in the white uniforms are, you'll be looking right down in Burrard Inlet on the waterfront in Vancouver. Okay, we're inside now, and uh, you get a, an opportunity not only to be able to tell the, the vast size of this center, uh, but also many of the uh, different pieces of art and displays that uh, hang down from uh, the roof. Yes, this is the interior of the Great Hall, which is the centerpiece of the Canada Pavilion. We are right in the middle of the pavilion now. It's an interesting hall, Peter, in that uh, it's, it's been designed on two levels. You see a lot of the, uh, the artwork and sculpture around the exterior, and it's quite uh, delightful and charming. The uh, high star we're looking at now is some of the modern technology. This is a, a piece of technology that is designed for use in uh, logging, for example. They uh, will be able to take it into difficult areas to, of, of access and be able to move heavy pieces of equipment and whatnot around. busy day for for this official uh, welcoming group and you can see the Prime Minister giving Prince Charles a, a slight tap on the uh, the shoulder to move things along a little bit or they'll get caught up on time everything throughout this day is done almost on a minute by minute uh, agenda terrific look of the Canada Pavilion now this is the display that's starting the uh, Harbor Royal salute all those uh, boats and vessels in a formation in a semicircle around the royal couple. Well, that, in fact, completes the uh, official opening ceremonies at the Canadian Pavilion. What happens now is the, the royal couple retire to the royal suite in the hotel adjacent to the Canadian Pavilion and prepare for this afternoon's activities. But the Granville Island site, you see Prince Charles and uh, Diana, the Princess of Wales, will not be uh, far behind talking to some of the people that are gathered at the Granville uh, Island area. Cloudy skies and somewhat cool temperatures, but a very warm reception, Peter, as everywhere in British Columbia, the people who show up to see the royal couple are very excited about being able to do so and reach out and, and touch. And this is something that uh, people in BC are enjoying. Uh, Princess of Wales, Diana, the first time she's been in this part of the world. Prince Charles has been here before and seems to genuinely enjoy the people on the West Coast. Always has uh, kind words to say about the areas that he's visiting. But to, for people here, a real treat to be able to welcome Diana on this trip. Heading off the ramp now to the dock area beside the, uh, the vessel, which is a uh, luxurious cruiser, cabin cruiser, a big one, privately owned, but obviously uh, in use today by the royal couple. The Hotai is that vessel you see in the center of your picture, slightly uh, closer to the bottom. Taking a position up there on the top of the bow end of the vessel, and I must say, a, a brave uh, move for both of them, neither wearing uh, coats. It's cool out there today, and especially out on the water. The so canoe leading the way as the Hotai approaches the Granville Street Bridge. The canoe uh, created by uh, the internationally renowned Haida artist Bill Reed and harbors from the Queen Charlotte's. And spectacular pictures being provided for us today uh, from right on board the vessel as the royal couple watch and are watched, as you can see many of the crowds that are lining the route. The, uh, there are a lot
lot of people who have gathered here today. Uh, we're figuring somewhere around the 100,000 mark to uh, witness this opening day of Expo 86. Hotai has docked now. Big uh, moment again for uh, Bill Bennett, who has been hoping for the success of Expo 86, and so far it certainly looks like he's got the success he was hoping for. opportunity to talk to members of that band who had performed the dance.